Come on, point at your neighbors and guess what? He been good to me. Come on. Come on, say he been good to me. If I had time to tell my real testimony, we'll be here to nourish you. But guess what? I'm going to summon him and say what? He been good to me. He been good to me. He been good to me. Hallelujah. Come on. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Come on, on your way down, clap your hands up for everyone online. We thank God for everybody. Come on, I say clap your hands for everybody watching us online. Amen. On last week, we did, I didn't know this. On last week, I thank God for everyone online. I didn't know this on last week. Um, I made this appeal to us, and we're going to do it again for I don't know how long. Um, about some of the uh, some, some of the challenges and craziness uh, that that uh, that Haiti is going through. And, and, and oddly enough, uh, um, last week we spoke about um, um, doing all we can. I'm asking everyone, I don't care if it's every week, I'm going to challenge you. Um, to, I don't care what it is that you put to a side. Uh, you'll be surprised um, that there's a pastor there now. Uh, we thank God for him, uh, Pastor uh, Bay, who's watching us. And he was able to uh, get um, about what they call 130 feet worth of that, uh, that blue tent kind of stuff. Y'all know what I'm talking about? He's able to cover his church's tarp, but it was it's something a little different. But anyways, um, and because of it, uh, a lot of the members of the church that were lost, they're all living now in the church. And that's not a bad thing, because they had nothing. And I live, obviously, this week, y'all heard, heard about some of the attacks that's been on um, the American soldiers and stuff like that. And so crazy how quickly we ran to, you know... And you got people who are still missing. We're not talking about just dead. It's thousands of people dead. And the pastor's telling me something that's so strange. Um, and I, I, I can just imagine. Obviously, y'all know I grew up a little dyslexic. So when I see words, I see pictures. Um, that's what helps me kind of um, understand the Bible. But um, And reading uh, his uh, message back to us, it was hard to talk, communicate, because the internet over there is bad. Not even talking about uh, the, that, that they're the, they're the, out of all the continents, all of the countries, um, they're, the, the, they're the least one that even get vaccination, so everybody's, a lot of people are sick um, um, by default. Um, and, and on top of all that, as he was talking about, he was just saying, it smells different. Can you imagine what it smells like when you got over a thousand bodies dead everywhere around you? And uh, not only are anybody helping you try to locate them, because obviously it takes a lot of manpower to move some of the debris and buildings and stuff that were gone. Um, but uh, I just... I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know what to say. And, um, anybody ever know what it feels like? Uh, some, some parents, some people know what it feels like when well, you want to help and can't. Uh, wish, wish you can fix it all and can't. And sometimes God puts in a situation like that, so all we can say is just what you got to you gotta trust God um, through it all. And, um, and some, some of that we're going to be touching on. So, again, I'm asking everybody, I'm challenging everybody if you can today. Um, if you can, if you can, you get a step outside of, of what you normally give. Uh, certainly, we as a ministry are doing all we can to give the support because every little bit helps. Anybody else will die this year, so I thank God for them. And again, I'm telling y'all, if you haven't um, established a prayer life, um, um, sometimes you can't pray for yourself, but you shouldn't have a problem praying for somebody else. I don't care who you are, I don't care uh, what nationality you is. I'm encouraging everyone to pray for those that are hurting. Um, God commissions us um, to, to reach out to those that are less fortunate than us. And some of us throw away. We can't even, we don't even like to drink our old bottle water. We drink a little bit and leave it and throw it away. And somebody over there right now will shout to Monday morning for a bottle of water. So I'm asking everybody again to make sure you can do all you can to support um, as we um, try to support uh, Haiti as well as everyone else. So certainly um, it's a sad occasion where people are dead and nobody even, not a lot of people caring about it. It's got to be tough to wake up every morning and, and don't see a country um, that can help. So, Anyways, we have to just pray that God continue to keep them. Amen. Um, pray that they have some real church under that tent. Amen. And I believe that God can do it. Amen. Y'all clap your hands. Give God praise for them. Amen. 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 Also, uh, 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 I want to um, and, and encourage everyone. Um, there is a, I mean, a series. Uh, I thought I was going to be over with this week, but I'm not. I think I got I got some more life in it. Uh, I'm in a series right now called We're In It To Win It. We're In It To Win It. We're In It To Win It. And uh, if you haven't um, um, saw any of these, um, I'm going to give you permission to log off, um, catch up. Uh, stay on and catch up later because you're going to miss some of the, um, um, the, the pattern that God is putting us to. Um, how many of y'all just say, I'm ready to win? 
Like I done took my L's, amen. I done took, amen. So y'all took L's in your life and relationships with your money. So I shout, I'm ready to win. I'm ready to win. Amen, ready to win. And so there's some things that um, um that I believe God's going to help us with, share. And I'm going to try to uh, help us with today. Um, as we move on, I'm trying to clap my fire words for you. We thank God for the thing. Everybody on the phone. Everybody back, hair done, nails done, everything. And y'all say everybody singing. I said, look at this. He's singing like that. Now you know, you know I was telling the woman got a hair done. She got a little more. What, what, I ain't hear what you said. Just look at her. I want to, uh, um, um, remember I told y'all originally that we was going to just go June, July, August because of that heat. But like, I don't know if Jesus come back real soon and he trying to let everybody know what hell might be like because it's been hot like it's a different kind of hot outside and so um we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna carry on over to september is that all right with y'all for y'all put bring on your stockings and your hats stuff i know y'all dining with hot hats and stockings but i'm just gonna ask y'all to hold tight for just like another month or so amen amen i know the worst community i heard they got a whole new hat set they all got hats and stockings they're gonna be rocking but i'm gonna tell them to hold tight I know they're ready to do that. Amen. Listen to this. I need everybody. Slap your neighbor and say, this is the place. This is the place where God shows himself strong. This is the place where the devil gets off of my hind end. This is the place where God proves I'm his child. This is the place where the door opens for me. This is the place where the yoke is broken. This is the place where the enemy is destroyed. This is the place where I give my testimony. This is the place where the devil's back up. This is the place. I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is in it. Within me, I will bless the Lord. How many people bless the Lord? Oh, my
All right, please, I gotta move because I, I, I want to get some good stuff to y'all. Sit down just for a moment. I'm gonna ask you to stand in just a few minutes. Unless you're trying to get your cardio in, it's just gonna be about another 60 seconds. You, you remain standing. Okay. Uh, so, so uh, uh, the first, 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 first message I speak from in this series of we're in it to win it. Uh, again, I'm only preaching people that want to win. If you still want to go through some more losers, seasons of losing, I don't been there before. I, I, I know, I, I'm going to just speak because listen, that's, I want to keep my head down because I want to look at the person that, that, that still want to lose. I've been in seasons of my life where I ain't care what they're preaching about. I was liking what I was doing. And, uh, I'm, look, I'm trying to look down. Uh, and uh, I came from an era where it was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride it to the wheels. Uh, uh, that, that, that's cool until the wheels really fall off. And so I'm going, I'm going to ask you uh, to, to please, please, please try to open your heart so you can hear some, some principles on helping you win. Because uh, I, I know it feel like to win only because there wasn't no more losing left. I done lost enough for everybody in this room. Please hear me. One of the reasons why I preach and I scream my holler so loud with God is because I'm still catching L's from things I thought when I was riding the wheels. All right, here we go. So well, we're in it to win it. So I, 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 told, I told us, uh, uh, everybody said, we're in it to win it. That's important. So I need you to understand that. We're only in it. God did not call you to be saved. And a lot of times, they would say, well, once you done got saved, once you start doing Jesus and going to church, look at your life now. So he's speaking against that flesh because that flesh like what it like. I don't come back. That's a whole other series. That flesh. Like what it like. All right, so we're here to win it. So uh, first one I told you to start is that that the game ain't over. If I said the game ain't over, it's important for you to understand that because if you're not careful, you'll go through life uh, thinking that your life is over. Who cares that you know ran into three booger whoops and that and the one you with has got a little booger on his life? Who cares about that? Guess what? Because the game ain't over. Who cares if supervisor don't like you? Situation ain't the way it is. Uh, it'd be different if the chat was over, but somebody shot that's more to my story. It's more of your story. It's more game left. You can't quit on God. Second thing I told you uh, 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 is, is on last week, I told you, you got to really do it. Call the time out. I thought you got mad when I said that. If I say call the time out, there are moments that, guess what? You need moments to regroup, to re-strategize, to be revived, to be restored. And some of you right now, you're going through seasons. This time out can last more than a Sunday, y'all, more than a week. It could be a month. Guess what? As many years as you gave to the devil, some of y'all owe God a year just timing out, put some things together, trying to weed off some of that old stuff. One of the hardest things it was me to do when I went through a time out season of my life was I asked God one time, I want to get closer to him, and I lost all my friends. I know y'all can't say man, but some of y'all ain't got one other friend that's really screaming Jesus. Look straight ahead. I know, I know, I know. I'm gonna supposed to bring your phone, your, your phone, your call all up, but that, that, that's the people that you talk to today that you know now. I know. Anybody ever had, look, just look straight ahead. The only one about to raise your hand, just a blink. Online, family, you can say something, but hey, anybody have people in your life, you're like, I know, I, I know I ain't seen any of bottles. I know every time we kick, I know I don't ever, I can't ever come out fooling with you. Don't let something say, man, just, I see everybody. So I'm saying is you got to go in the call time. I ever say call the time out. You don't want to lose because you didn't call the time out. Trust me. Right now we're in a season of sports and a lot of people are already catching hell because they didn't call the time out. All right, today I'm going to speak from one thought, one thought only. Come on, right say your feet right quick. I'm going to read just two verses, a very familiar uh, uh, passage of scripture. Um, if you've been in church just a little while, um, you've been walking with God a little while, you heard this a little bit. Um, you have it. I'm going to try to give it a little bit of clarity. And I'm going to try to bring it on home today. I thank God for our worship unit. Thank God for everyone band. Amen. Amen. We thank God for everybody. All of our preachers and our leaders, we thank God for Earl behind the camera. We thank God for everyone making it all work. If I say making it all work. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. We, again, we thank God for everyone online. It's a blessing to see that you're with us. For those of you who are fighting this, a, a young lady that, that called me, uh, uh, she's actually, I uh, um, shouldn't say her name, I guess, but I'm praying for her. Uh, she, uh, she has pneumonia in the hospital. Um, and... Uh, this is, listen, this, this in particular young lady had two, uh, had got back, uh, I'm sorry, had got the shot, got a booster shot, and got sick with COVID. Now, that's not telling y'all that, that feel that to get shot, to get the vaccine, the vaccination. You, you got the vaccine, your kids get it. But they just call them your school shots. Them vaccinations, baby. Y'all know we was growing up, every kid, I don't know if y'all had a grandma like my wife, so if your child had chicken box back in the day, Grandma didn't fix it, so I said, go on in there with them. Yeah, and yeah. hey, we finna go through this. Everybody finna get chicken popped. 
I'm sorry, y'all y'all so nice, y'all don't know about that. That little pink thick lotion should rub on you that uh it was bright in this shirt. What's it called? Calamine. Y'all don't know about no calamine? That was a vaccination back in the day. Calamine. You walk around itching. Oh god. Anyway, some of y'all right now. That's why you got them couple of scars you're trying to bleach out. Them chicken pot scars. You need to get back to it. All right, this is so. So I'm saying that I want to thank God for her, um, but I want to tell y'all for everybody online. Um, um, if you feel the level of faith, I never want to stop anybody for pressing their way to be into the house of the Lord. Um, certainly don't think we're here. We're renegades. We just trust God. Um, and I know some of you, I'm pushing you because too many of y'all going to the house line, nail salon. You're going to get your, you're going to restaurants, you're going to Walmart, and you're not coming to the house of the Lord. And shame on you. Everybody say shame. All right, here we go. St. Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 through 9. Let's read it together. Uh, and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, three times, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most glad is it, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. That's so loaded right there. Amen. Uh, it said, verse 7, Unless I shall be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations, there was given to me a thorn in my flesh, the message of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, Said three times, I, I was seeking God about that, that it might depart from me. But he said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Just for a little while, they want y'all to help me this thought, this thought while we're in this, uh, we are in it to win a series. I need to look at somebody closer to the right quick. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Come on, that's two more minutes right there. Come on now, y'all Y'all know I'm taxing time. That's two more minutes. If you look at your neighbor, find somebody in front of you, behind you. Say, neighbor. neighbor. You got two minutes, I'm talking to y'all. Play through it. Now, see, I got to be real with you. I've been nice all year. But God commissioned me to tell you, you gotta play through it. Come on, find me one more person across from me in front of you. And you gotta walk a little closer to them because they don't want to hear you, but tell them anyway and say, I came to tell you. I tell you. you gotta play through it. Say, for the rest of this year, play through it. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for your presence and your power. I thank you for your word. Now, God, do it only you can do. Have your way in this place. Touch somebody, God. Somebody just got to be cool with you, God. Touch their flesh. Challenge their mind, God. Inside somebody's flesh. Challenge them, God. So they might learn how to give you all the praise and the glory. So they can live for you, God, and not for the devil. It's in Jesus' name we pray. We give you all the glory. Smile, lift your hands and shout, it's already done. In Jesus' name, amen. On the way down to see my just holler, play through it. Play through it. Uh, play through it. Well, I'm going to go through it. way you going to come? I'm going to come another way. Let me come another way. Thomas. Thomas. Uh, Edward Patrick Brady Jr. Better known as uh, TB12. Yeah, TB12. Uh, uh, it is a reigning Super Bowl quarterback uh, for the Tampa Bay, I'm sorry, Tampa Bay uh, Buccaneers. Uh, and he, he's most most decorated NFL player of all time. Uh, most, I said most decorated player, uh, NFL player of all times. Oh, my God. He has more Super Bowl wins. Listen to closer. He has more Super Bowl wins than any other NFL team. Uh, uh, I said he has more Super Bowl wins than any other NFL team. Uh, might not hear about Pittsburgh Steelers has uh, uh, has, has six Super Bowl wins, um, uh, and they're, they're tied with the New England Patriots. Uh, out of 55 years of Super Bowls, uh, they, they, they tied for six with the New England Patriots. Of course, uh, those six came with Tom Thomas, Edward Patrick Brady Jr. Okay, y'all, I know y'all don't get no help here. Tom Brady has won the seventh seven Super Bowls of his career. He's been to 10. He's won seven. Uh, what what TV 12 uh, recently uh, said in an interview with uh, Tony Romo, uh, he's a retired quarterback from the losing cap. I'm sorry, the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, he, 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 he told Tony Romo, uh, uh, many, many, many people acknowledge my successes. I'm just talking about Tony Romo. I'm sorry, y'all. Just, just, 
In the interview with Tony Romo, he told Tony Romo uh, 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 that many people acknowledge me for my successes, but I remember more of my pains. So many people don't talk about my pains. He told Tony Romo, many people know my success, but I remember many of my pains. Tom Brady, who just turned 44 years old two weeks ago, tried to describe his pain and his painful moments. He said uh, there were two, there are 259 picks in every NFL draft. 259 picks in every NFL draft. In 2000, uh, he was the 199th pick. 199th pick. He said, I, I, I was then the last quarterback on the roster even when I did get drafted. And because of everyone, everyone else's injuries, quarterback's injuries, he got an opportunity to play. So it's painful to sit there. And you're waiting on somebody to get hurt because you know you're the worst one. Oh, Lord. Uh, he, Tom Brady, though, uh, with those seasons when he was riding high. Uh, by 2006, uh, Tom Brady had won three Super Bowls. He just ended the draft. I told you 2000. By 2006, six years, he had won three Super Bowls himself. He was leading his team in another undefeated season. Undefeated season, y'all. Patriots were 16 and 0 on their way to the NFL playoffs. Uh, didn't tell y'all this, but he was dating a lady by the name of Bridget uh, Monahan. Uh, Bridget Monahan. And he decided to end their relationship at the end of the regular season. So at the end of the regular season, of the football season, he decided to end their relationship. Um, he started dating a new lady, a supermodel named uh, uh, Gazelle. Uh, anyways, in January 2017, uh, I'm sorry, 2007, um, um, they were undefeated. He was trying to describe the pain, and he said they had one game left. They had won two playoff games now. They won one game left. Y'all ain't going to believe this, y'all. Tom Brady and Randy Moss broke every single season record between the quarterback and the receiver. And guess what? They got one game left to win. They're undefeated. Nobody's ever won like 18 games in a row before, y'all. And uh, y'all know that, but he lost the Super Bowl. After going undefeated to the New York Giants, he lost Super Bowl. Uh, the pain of going undefeated, 18 games of losing one Super Bowl game. Pain. Not to mention the pain, y'all. TMZ, y'all don't know what's going on. Uh, and every tabloid exposing that his ex-girlfriend is now three months pregnant. Not his ex-wife. His ex-girlfriend. Once she, she dated a couple. Uh, and the pain he felt. Oh, my God. Uh, he just lost undefeated Super Bowl. He said, uh. New girlfriend, now she tripping. Y'all gonna believe this, y'all. Uh, that was painful. He talked about it. Um, then Tom Brady uh, would go uh, to his fifth Super Bowl, um, 2011, and lose again to the same team that beat him with his undefeated before, New York Giants, 2011. What y'all saying? Uh, what pastor I'm trying to understand? Uh, after winning the Super Bowl 2014, the news comes out uh, with an accusation now, Bill Belichick, or uh, uh, Tom Brady, ordered that their footballs would be slightly deflated. Yeah. Uh, look straight ahead, y'all know. This is Cowboy fans here. And, and, and which, and which he, he, he was never found guilty for. Never found guilty for it. Never, never found guilty for it. Uh, he talked about the pain of that time in his life and, and, and his family. He says even at that time, he was in the tabloids, his new wife now was pregnant with their first child. Yeah. Uh, so much about pain. The pain or the scrutiny of it that his wife's dealing with because she was breaking the first crowd. He, he didn't pause in an interview and describe how hard it is to win when all eyes are on you. Let me say that again. Uh, uh, that, that, that some winners online today, and somebody, someone is here today, you need to hear this, please hear me. Uh, he said, It's hard to win when all eyes are on you. Oh my God. Now, y'all, please hear what he's trying to describe. The pain don't sound like painful. But now, the next six years, if I say next six years, Next six years, uh, TB12 uh, leads his team to four Super Bowls and wins three of them. Oh, man. Y'all don't believe this. Uh, he talks about the pain uh, of not being wanted after you don't won all the Super Bowls at the organization now that they ever had. Now they're saying, we don't know if we want you no more. They never won a Super Bowl till you showed up. Now the six Super Bowls they got came from Thomas Edward Patrick. He says, talking about some pain of organization that you have won the Super Bowls. They went to nine Super Bowls because of you. You won six. Now they don't want you no more. Now because of this age, Tom Brady deals with the pain of backlash. Um, because he's uh, 43 now um, at that time on his way to Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, uh, and uh, He wins the Super Bowl first year. Tampa Bay. He says, and now today, he's talking to this just two months ago. He says, and now here I am. I've won seven Super Bowls, and they still saying I ain't got it. Painful. 
I don't know who I'm talking to today, uh, but he makes profound statements. Tony Romo, I'm never going to forget it. He says some powerful pro to Tony Romo, a uh, uh, pro profound statement uh, to, to help get through the pain. He says, I've been dealing with it my whole life. I've never been the first pick for anybody. I've never been what everybody else wanted. He said, he, he said, he said, it's all a part of the game. And I'm just going to have to play through it. Ah. He said, I found out if I continue to play through it, what most people call a bad year is better than most teams. Well, Pastor, what are you talking about? You didn't have to bring up Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr., did you? Uh, here's the problem with the text today. I'm in the Bible. Let me go cut across the grass. Uh, Paul, y'all, is a Tom Brady in the Bible. He's a Tom Brady in the Bible. He, he's, 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 a, he, he, he's won more than anyone else in the Bible, according to Scripture. He wrote half the half New Testament right now. Uh, he, he says in verse 7, y'all, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, let me tell you what he said. He said, so I won't be, uh, uh, he, he said, so I won't be, uh, so, so I won't be exalted above measure. Watch what he says. Uh, 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 uh. So I won't be exalted above the abundance of highs and winds in God. God has granted me something. He gave me a thorn in my flesh. Now, many scholars and pastors and Christians and uh, many church folk, y'all, they, they, they debate on what that thorn was for years. They debate on it. You, you hear the right people talking. Let me go and kill some of these sin opinions. Now, some folks say, well, you know, uh, you know that's why he gave. You know that's why she gave. You know that's why they, they, that's, they, they, they didn't even try to describe that. Maybe even Paul, but Paul was not married. They said maybe he was gay. I don't know why they just put gay with that thorn in the flesh. Uh, they say, you know, that, you know, that, you know, did, did, did God, could they, you know, did God make Paul gay? Did God curse him um, from his past failures? Uh, first of all, there's a sin for thoughts. God couldn't give you something that was sin because he died for you. That's crazy. Um, um, but, 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 uh, 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 God, God would never make or uh, give anyone, uh, 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 make someone carry sin. Uh, but, but many people argue, um, that maybe it was a maybe it was a handicap, maybe it was an ailment, maybe it was a, a, a issue, maybe, maybe it was a tough family matter, maybe it was some internal fight. But 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 the Bible never tells, uh, gives, uh, uh, tells us uh, ever, uh, never even mentions uh, what his thorn was. But let me tell about fifty-five people online and, uh, uh, and, and everybody here at the place today. Uh, that's good news. That's good news that he ain't mentioned what the thorn was because ninety percent of the time uh, your thorn ain't nobody business. Uh, Lord Jesus, I'm about to get happy right there myself. Uh, what are you wrestling with? Uh, oh my God, ain't for you to know, ain't for nobody else to know. Uh, and people that's acting funny, uh, oh my God, people will act funny. People are acting funny uh, when they know your thorn. Uh, yes, oh my God. Sometimes it's church folk too. Uh, preach those I'm trying. Uh, but can y'all help me right quick? Y'all been too quiet right quick. Can y'all help me online? Can y'all look at anybody? You right quick and just tell them about uh, get you some business. Uh, I can't hear nobody talking right quick. Uh, will you talk somebody type in the comments right quick? Get you some business. I can't hear nobody. Uh, somebody open your mouth and tell everybody that's worried about your thorn. Uh, get you some business. Get some business. Uh, uh, all the things you can preach in church uh, and pastor still trying to figure out what the thorn was. Uh, so I'll get you some business. See, God, oh, please hear me. God, oh my God, God gave it to you and God covered it for you. Boy, that's so good right there, don't you? You need to say that again. Let me try again. I said, God gave it to you and God covered it for you. Lord, that's so good. I got to say that one more time. I said, God gave it to you and God covered it for you. So Paul said this. The Bible says something crazy. The Bible said, the thorn buffeted me. Here's the problem. Okay, that's not 2021 third term. What are you talking about, Pastor? Those are the thorn. But, but, but let me tell you, uh, uh, let me chop it up uh, so you can chew it up. I'm chopping so you can chew it up. Uh, uh, the, the word buffet uh, is a sports term. Um, it's almost really a, a, a violent term, um, sometimes used for wrestling and boxing. Uh, it literally means to hit. Um, not just to hit, uh, but to hit repeatedly. Not just to hit repeatedly, but it means to hit repeatedly in the same place. Oh my God, 
I can't get no help. Paul said, every time I seem to score, the thorn hits me. Oh, I'm talking to somebody here already. Every time I think I'm getting ahead, the thorn hits me. I can't get no help right there. As soon as I pay this off, the thorn hits me. Lord, I can't get nobody to give me a As soon as we get through hard to look like we okay, the thorn hits me. I can't hurt nobody. Looks like things are getting better, and the thorn hits me. Does anybody know what it feels like to have some pain for Hit you over and over and over in the same place, over and over again. Every time you try to win, you get hit again. I need the preachers of real soul that can admit that there's been some seasons of my life and I kept getting hit over and 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 over again. Somebody try to hit me. I'll uh, say so you understand the content. Please hit me. I gotta move fast. Let me use context. You understand the content. Here it is. Let me slow down. Uh, verse 7 says, It was given to me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I didn't bring this on myself. It was given to me. Oh my God. I know y'all never heard this. Huh? See, every thorn isn't a result of bad behavior. Oh my God. Many thorns are given to you. Lord, don't get in trouble, don't you? The same God that helped Paul win is the same God that helped him give him the storm. I know y'all want to hear that part. I said the same God that helped Paul win is the same God that gave him the thorn. Oh man, y'all don't want to say man. So even though the Bible doesn't say what the thorn is, we do understand that the thorn was painful. Oh man, y'all gonna be mad now. I'm gonna cut across the grass. It ain't gonna be much longer. Uh, hit it. Uh, you, can, can somebody say the word? Uh, the church doesn't talk much about her. Uh, somebody shout pain. Yeah, 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 yeah. What happens when the music stops and you leave the glory of God's presence in God's house? I don't talk much about that. Somebody shout pain. Oh yes, we, we preach a whole lot about the lady with the issue of blood. We do. We talk about the lady with the issue of blood uh, in the 12 years. All the doctors that she saw. But nobody ever talks about the pain and the cramps she went through for 12 years. I want to hear a sermon about the cramps. It's my shout pain. I can't hear nobody here. Pain is the new and the most lucrative system in America. Pain is the new and the most lucrative system in America. Can, can, can y'all give me five minutes to explain? Just give me five minutes. I want to explain this very quick. Um, uh, I'm gonna cut, come cut, cut, I'm gonna cut a corner. Uh, I'm gonna put the seatbelt on. I'm probably, you know, I'm gonna be riding dirty, but we're we gonna cut. I'm gonna cut, and I'm gonna make that cut. Just, you know, don't, don't be looking at me funny. Y'all be driving somebody, you turn the corner fast, they be looking like, yeah. cut the corner, cut the corner. We're trying to get there. Uh, here we go. Uh, America uh, uh, today uh, is screaming, we're in the pandemic. Yeah, but nobody's talking about the pain epidemic we have. Uh, let me prove it to you. Uh, I know y'all know this. Y'all be the smartest person at work tomorrow. Here it is. America only constitutes for 10% of this world's population. 10.4 to be exact. America only consumes 10% of the world's population. I know y'all think America big. We just, we, we, you know, we like, a, we like a small city with no mall. Kind of pretty much like. Uh, 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 point of order, something like that. Oh, amen. Uh, uh, so, so, anyways, uh, 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 but, 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 we, but, but, we, but we consume 75% of all medication. We only 10% of the world. Okay? But we consume 75% of the medication. Did y'all hear what I just said? Because we as Americans can't take the pain. I wish I had time to talk about it. I don't have time. I had time. I talk about it. when I went to Africa, I found out why people have church, they go in and they love God differently because in Africa, ain't no Walgreens up the street and you either pray and get healed or you die. Right, right, right. I'm sorry, I'm coming back in. Um, 52 million Americans use prescription drugs today. 52 million Americans use prescription drugs today. In the last 30 days, 6.1 million people pop are used unsubscribe pills. Looks pretty here. I know somebody, my two for give me something, girl. Looks pretty here. Girl, you might have to take half of this, this too much. 6.1 million people pop and use unprescribed pills. We ain't even gonna talk about
about all the things that ain't even mentioned about the PSU pop you can't even pronounce. And, I, and those, and out of those six million, they suffer from addiction and painkillers. There's a lot of people uh, that are in pain. There's even more people that are trying to escape the pain. Let me say it again. There's a lot of people in pain. There's a, there's a lot more people trying to escape the pain. Are you telling me, Pastor, that you can be blessed and highly favored and in pain? Oh, man. Are you telling me I can love God for real, for real? It's not for real, for real. I can love God for real, for real and be in pain? Oh, my God. Uh, yes, God can send you pain. Uh, uh, let me walk the dog a little bit. You in pain because uh, you in pain because you thought you'd be further in this season of your life. Uh, you in pain. You, you you in pain because you thought this season uh, would be over by now in your life. I can't get no help right now. You in pain because uh, you never imagined life without your mother being gone. Never imagined life without your father being gone. You in pain. I know you can't say, man. You in pain because you never saw your own child that you taught the ABCs to. Now they resenting you. Look straight ahead. Oh my God, I'm talking about real pain. I'm talking about the pain because you only, uh, you the only one online watching worship in your house. It's painful to know. You're the only one seeking God in your family. Somebody shout pain. Y'all ain't give me enough help. You're in pain because you can't find no support. But everybody seems to always find you when they need help. I can't get none right there. Somebody shout pain for her. You're in pain. Let me come get some of these singles. You're in pain because everybody got a new boo but you. Look straight ahead, those. You're in pain. You're in pain because you treated people good and say loyal to them. And Negroes were trifling and tried you any kind of way. And you still trying to be saved and trying to be nice. And sometimes being saved is painful. I can't get no hook right now. You in pain because you try to eat right and you still can't see to lose no weight. I'm talking to real folk right now. You in pain, baby. Oh, Lord knows who did I say. You in pain and you can't find no prescription to deal with your bank account. You in pain. You in pain because you lay beside somebody and you don't know who they is. Somebody's out pain for you. Where that medication at? So I want to know where that medication at. So here's the only problem. I want to talk to parents just for a moment. Parents, um, you better get out in the mirror. You better put that little lace front down. And man, you better stop doing the push-ups and get out that mirror. Because guess what? Your children got to be a priority again. Oh, y'all don't believe it? Children now are getting prescribed regular medication as early as the third grade. I'm not trying to get prescribed. I'm talking about regular. They get refills in the third grade. Uh, and America is hoping they get addicted until they die. I remember. I remember when you was feeling bad, got sick in school. They would sit you down to the nurse office. Uh, and the drug they gave us was lay down a little while. <laughs> Here's the drug they gave us. Lay down a little while. And by next period of summer, you was back in class, and your mama had to bring your children in, baby. But now, y'all, you ain't careful. They'll give your child another pill, and another letter, and another pill, and another letter. Parents, you better wake up. Because children today, as of March 2021, are now equal with suicides in America. I don't know if y'all heard I just say. Number one, America is the most suicidal country in the world. And now, children under the age of 17 down are now equal with the adults of suicide. Y'all ain't saying amen now. And they're leaving notes and going live saying they couldn't take the pain. You got middle schoolers now that are cutting themselves. And then you got grandparents that are drowning in depression because pain don't discriminate. Pain don't discriminate. Pain does not know an age. But I believe God has had me here today, had me logged on today, because God is saying, you're going to live beyond the pain. 
You got to see the man right there who's been done. I said, I said, God is saying today, you going to live beyond the pain. I can't get no help right there. I said, you going to live beyond the pain. Here's the bad news. You cannot live. I know the ain't preaching this. Don't get mad at me. You cannot live and not experience pain. You cannot live and not experience pain. Oh, Lord, here's the bad news. Everybody just whisper this. Don't say it loud. A few people online don't want me to hear too much. If I say, it come with the game. It come with the game. It come with the game. The Bible says, I can prove to you in scripture. The Bible says, in this life, you shall have tribulation. Oh my God, tribulation is painful, but it's necessary. That's a whole other sermon. Uh, I grew up in an era where, uh, right about now, doing service, they would say to somebody, bring your cigarettes to the altar. I came out of that time. Y'all don't know. Uh, they never do altar calls for those that are addicted to alcohol and, and cocaine and drugs. Uh, 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 they would have delivered services just for addicted people. But I never heard them call anybody that was dealing with pain to come to the altar. Never heard them call the Christians that were carrying pain to come to the altar. All the people that are addicted to painkillers come to the altar. Some of y'all can't say man right now if you're trying to stay a straight face. You can't even go to sleep without some benedict or the night where it looks straight ahead. I'm just going to look straight in the camera right here. I know I can't say right here in this room today. Dig that. Six million people are addicted to painkillers and many of them are saved. Let me go, y'all man. So hear me. God will assign pain to your process. God will assign pain to your process. God will assign your pain to your process. Okay. Can I prove that to you in scripture? I'm going to prove it to you. Uh, Psalms, I prove it. Uh, that scripture in, 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 in the 46th division of Psalms, uh, Bible says, God's a very present help. No, the Bible says God's our strength, our refuge, a very present help in trouble. So God says, oftentimes I want to get to know you. I want us to get close to each other. But you won't naturally do it on your own. You don't naturally want to pray to me. Oh my God, I don't talk to somebody here now. Anybody ever had somebody who didn't naturally love them back? They, they, they didn't naturally want them the same. And here you are giving them gallon love and they giving you paint love back. And God said, you don't naturally love me like that. So guess what? I found out something that will help you get closer to me. Somebody shout pain. Trouble is pain. Oh my God! I, I need to. I need you to get. I need to give you three quick plays uh, to help you push through uh, and play through. Uh, let me give you three quick plays. Put in your playbook. Uh, I know the pain and the thorn is tough, but God gave me three helps in this game of life. Pastor, why did God give you these helps? Because He wanted me to remind you, you're in it to win it. You're in this to win it. Don't do not get on God's team and lay down. God said, I saved you. Covered you, forgave you, so you can sit on your life and do nothing. I kept you, kept you from the robber, kept you from the person that was killing that night. You know how it was. Huh? You was in a crazy situation. Huh? Maybe you was in a crazy relationship. Maybe you was locked up, bammed up, huh? tied up with the wrong person. And God said, I brought you through that huh? so you can sit down in your life huh? and go back to the same stuff. You need three plays. Put in your playbook. Three plays. Put in your playbook right quick. I don't help you. I don't get out your way. Here it is. You got to put this in your playbook. Number one, one. I know you're going to like it. I'm going to tell it to you first. It's one of the hardest plays to put in your playbook. Everybody say patience. patience. I got to get out of here. Y'all mad. I'll just come back next week and try to do better. I don't want you mad at me. I'm just trying to do what God told me to do. Everybody say patience. Oh, my God. The old church said it like this. Uh, trouble. Don't last always. Uh, oh my God. Every cloud runs out of rain. What my old saints uh, Tough times don't last, uh, but tough people do. Uh, Y'all don't know that kind of stuff. Uh, Isaiah said it like this. Uh, they that wait on the Lord, uh, he shall renew your strength. All right. I don't say this right, coach, y'all, man. Here's the problem. Many times when the pain is throbbing, who here knows about throbbing pain? So much I'm throbbing. Uh, you want to reach to the painkiller. Oh my God. But if you can just hold on. Lord, I've got the whole church right now. And you can hold on just a little while longer. God will make a way somehow. Lord, I got to preach to myself. If you can hold on just a little while longer, God will make a way somehow. I don't know what I'm preaching to, but I just want to remind somebody, you got to be patient and hold on. God will make a way. Turn out. All right, here it is. He's ready to get mad, I gotta tell you the truth. 
Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, he says, my grace is sufficient. Here's my problem with that verse. It don't, it don't even sound sufficient. My grace is sufficient. Some of y'all don't like this. Why, Pastor? Because my grace is sufficient. Um, if I water it down and I rinse it all off, rinse it off. It, it, here's, it, it, here's what it really means. My grace is sufficient. You can handle it. Oh, my God. It hurts. But you can handle it. Oh, my God. It's painful. But you can handle it. God. Oh, Lord. God, what are you saying to me? My grace is sufficient. You can handle it. Just don't call. Mr. Painkiller. Please don't call. Just a Please don't I'm trying. Please don't drop it down. But since the time of all, you can handle it, baby. You don't need to run no game. You don't need to end a sickness in the shed. You got to learn how to trust God and be patient. Come on, son, you got to be patient. You got to be patient. You got to be patient. You got to put patience in your playbook. Your biggest problem is if you're trying to skip churches, you don't want to be a part of the place. You're trying to join Walmart Ministries. Walmart make you think. You get your food quickly. You get your nails done. Go by the bank, file your taxes. Get you a battery for your car. But God says, that's not the real world, baby. I ain't no Instagram. I ain't no TikTok. God said, you got to be patient. You got to trust me. You got to hold on. I got to see if you're real or slow. I got to give you faith for the word. But I shall be patient. I know we're going to be amens right there because everybody wants to remain now. And if you don't learn how to be patient right now, I'm warning some people in this room. You'll be patient with an IV running out of love. You'll be patient with one of your legs missing. It's fast like you keep it, keep running. I got to get nice. God has a way of breaking you down. Like this in the 23rd Psalm, he maketh me to he make you lie down now. Let's say it again. He'll make you lie down now. Can y'all do me a favor? Could anybody help me today? I ain't asked y'all for no call in a moment yet. I'm gonna ask y'all to stand up two more times. Y'all stand your feet right quick and do something for me. Really, for real. Just, 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 just tap a nigga on the show. So you gotta be patient. You just, you just gotta be patient. Come on, everybody tap. I, I don't care who they are. Mama, brother, tap a man, brother. Tap somebody. Find somebody to tap. So you gotta be patient. That's all. You gotta be patient. You gotta be patient. You gotta be patient. You gotta be patient. You're closer than you think. Stop it now, I'm gonna be one more and I'm gonna I'm gonna take it off. It's not saying you gotta put your playbook up. It's not just patience, huh? You gotta put prayer in your playbook. Oh my god. It's for everybody that's about it, about it, guess what? Everybody say prayer. Now this is a problem for something. Let me tell you why it's a problem. Huh? Let me tell you why the people in this room that are gonna fight prayer the most. People who are always busy communicating to other people. I'm going to step away and try to say this with what what all sincerity. For those of you um, uh, who's always communicating with other people, uh, whether that's uh, on social media, whether it's talking on the phone, whether it's always communicating with your own analyzing mind, how many of y'all talk to yourself a lot? Don't look, look straight ahead. I know. Here's the problem. Your problem is that guess what? You don't understand that guess what? You'll never get through your pain because you don't pray about it. And God says, I'm jealous today how you can communicate for hours. You can, your phone is hot in your ear. When you get ready to pray, you run out of stuff to say, Lord, I'm just here. I am. I just, you know what I'm saying? I just, you know, man, I love you. You know, I just, I, you know what I'm saying? I just, you know, I need you a little bit. And God says, you run out of stuff when you're trying to pray to me. Huh? But you can talk for two days straight. Huh? And you don't have a prayer life. Huh? And God says, you're going to keep losing. You're not going to get through this. Don't you know by now I kept you? Not for you to, try, to just celebrate me. Huh? When you win the awards in your life, huh? God says stop treating me huh? like you're the BET Hip Hop Awards. As huh? soon as I get in the ring, I say, Lord, I want to thank you for that. You know what I'm saying, God? You did that, man, for the man upstairs. God says, I'm not the listen. You can't play me like I'm the BET Hip Hop Awards. God says, you got to pray. Huh? So I shall pray about it. Huh? Oh, Lord, I'm going to get in trouble. Huh? Many times huh? during our Sunday school years, um, Sunday school teacher taught you wrong. Lord, I don't want nobody to hope Sunday school teachers. They live and still, I'm sorry, but y'all, yeah, they taught you incorrectly. 
You were taught when you pray, you should get what you want. Because you're honest. Somehow, that makes God obligated to give you what you want because you told the truth today. But the process of prayer is not to get God to will what you want. The process of prayer is for you to want what God wills. Let me say it again. The process of prayer is not to get God to will what you want. The true process of prayer is for you to want what God wills. Lord, I can't get no help right now. See, the longer you seek God in prayer, Lord, I'm about to get happy. Uh, it may not change your pain, but it will increase your purpose. Those who get out of that right now. I said, it may not change your pain, but it will increase your purpose. It will change your attitude. It will change your commitment. It will change your heart. It will change your ways. Lord, let me say that again. It will change your ways. If you learn how to Pray. You look like you say, I don't know what I can do. I don't know why I was so crazy. But prayer taught me. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ. So I shall prayer taught me. Has anybody ever prayed and looked up and said, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. I know some of y'all ain't shouting right now because you don't want to change. Can y'all just help me right quick? Uh, Boy, somebody say, you better pray. Uh, somebody say, you better pray. Uh, I know you don't want to change, uh, but you better pray. Uh, you better pray. Uh, ain't nothing worse uh, than somebody that claims uh, they love God uh, and won't pray. Uh, look at real folk at uh, How you say they love you, uh, but won't talk to you? Uh, they pray to say it like this. Uh, if you don't want me, uh, then don't talk to me. God said, I feel fantasia in 2021. We got these fake Christians that come to church, want all my stuff, want all God's goodness, but won't talk to me. I came to preach with some selfish people, some painful people. Somebody think that's a neighbor. It's a new little line I call me off. No one can tell it like this. Have a little talk with Jesus. sermon in the streets. Uh, uh, fast money don't last money. Right. Slow money is for show money. Right. That was just the extra right there. <laughs> so, so you gotta learn how to be patient. Yes. Second thing you gotta do, you gotta stop walking around here trying to get another tattoo of praying hands until my only God can judge me and get a prayer life. Some of y'all got stuff written in Japan and Japanese and Afghanistan and Pakistan. You got everything tattooed to your body, but you ain't got a real prayer life. And just because you got grandma name tattooed on your arm, don't mean you got no prayer life like she did. I came to blow the whistle on you today. You about to get a flag in your life, but you learn how to pray. Pray. Don't tell me. No, don't tell me to pray for your mama. You pray for your mama. Don't tell me to pray for your situation. You pray for it. Tell me, Major Man. I don't want to win and you lose. That's, well, well, make you mad. Um, uh, last thing, um, um, you gotta put it in the playbook. Um, I'm gonna say Corinthians, y'all. I'm trying to talk to you. I'm just trying to read the word a little bit, talk to y'all. I'm way out of here. Good to see y'all, though. God bless y'all today. Um, it's just a blessing to see y'all today. Thank y'all for dealing with uh, my, 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 uh, my introduction, Thomas, Edward, Patrick Brady Jr., Tampa Bay's quarterback. Amen. God said, my grace is sufficient unto thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. 
Most gladly, therefore, I will rather glory in my infirmities. Two plays, two plays. First one, I tell you, you got to be patient. Second one, you got to do is pray. Uh, last one, I'm going to bother a few of y'all because I'm going to give y'all a new definition to it. Uh, the third one is you got to learn how to do is praise. Now, before you start clapping your hands and, 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 and giving God praise uh, with your hands, and when Israel starts saying praise, people go to clapping their hands. Uh, and, 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 they, and they start saying hallelujah. And that's cute. Uh, real praise says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Okay, I can't get no help right there. See, real praise, uh, a show up when church is over. Lord Jesus, I can't get no help right there. See, a real praise uh, is a joy that God gives you. Uh, so you walk around saying, no, I ain't better than you. Uh, but I'm better off. I walk with a praise. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, let me come get somebody. Uh, let me help somebody understand. Uh, when I was born in some of the songs, uh, and I had some good days. Uh, uh, I had some heat over the uh, I'm a real woman. I had some weird days. Some sleep at night. But when I look around and my thing leaves over, all of my good days, I'll wait my bad days. So instead of complaining, so I know how crazy we are. That's what we need. We need some more. To stop complaining so much. And right when you get ready to play, you're gonna pray. I can't hear nobody. Somebody shout praise. And you look at somebody close to you and tell them praise. Praise. He deserves the praise. Let me tell the devil something. Here's what the devil don't know. Ain't nothing scary in the room in worship. Please know that I'm trying. I say ain't nothing scary in the room in worship. I know I'm good. I know I'm good. 
I'm like, white, white, go ahead, God. I'm going to let you know. I love you, God. I got to know you. Man, it's flaw, man. It's flaw. I'm telling y'all this, Paul. And you, you don't deserve a championship that you ain't willing to work through. How are you ever going to have the joy of victory when you never play through nothing? I hear people saying, oh, Pastor, I want to be like this. I want to be like this with you. You don't want to be like that. I had to play through some stuff. You watch me today, but you missed 10 years of my life. And everybody was crying and talking about me, laughing at me, talking about I wasn't real. When my own homeboy said he done went fed. I don't, I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, that, that's, like that's like a bad term for a guy. That's like saying, I don't, I'm not hating the police. I had to talk to you after the church. Like, but, but you know what it feels like that for somebody to say like, oh, you one of them now. Like you a simp, you, I mean, you're, you're a square, you're a loser. I'm sorry, let me, let me. If I say play through it, if I say any feet, I want to let you go. If you want to give today, I want to give online. I thank God for everyone here today. I want to give you an opportunity to give. Um, I believe that God uh, God let you watch this service by accident. For those of y'all that believe in osmosis, osmosis is coincidences. People that feel I was just, uh, you know, just happened this way. I don't believe in nothing just happens. I don't believe in nothing just happens. Down to the pain and the trouble you got, I believe God knows it, knows you can get through it. You ain't got to believe me. I've been living long enough to know. For those of y'all that want to come to worship, everybody coming to church one day, you might be in the casket. It might be too late. I wish I could tell you that Namar's promised you, and as a dream, and that vision that you're trying to work so hard for, I wish I could tell you that it was going to be promised to you, but I can't tell you that. As a young lady watches us right now, today she had a great job, great career, everything. That's what she was um, being a professor at USF, and today she's landing in the hospital to fight for her life. That's how easily plans can change. Here's the three plays you got to learn. You got to get some patience. Living in the world is telling you you gotta go get it, and you're losing you while you're trying to get it. Let me say it again. You're losing you trying to go get it. And we find a better you when you're what? Patient. If I say patient, patient, patient. For those y'all who don't have a prayer life, I'm gonna ask you today. Here's a reminder for those y'all that love your phone. Try to pray every time you charge your phone. That's a start. For those of you just more help. Some of y'all, you take showers. I hope you do it here. Tell me you take showers. When you take a shower or when y'all bathe, I know some old folks say you bathe. Um, go on in there and bathe. <laughs> I'm going to ask you when you pray, you don't have your phone, when you're in the shower, pray while you're taking a shower. Stop, just get out of the milk, get out of the forest, get out of Mississippi Mass Choir. I know y'all, everybody turn into music artists when you get it, but can you pray while you get in that shower, please? Talk to God. Some of y'all on your way to work. Before you, before you get to the, when you get to the first tra traffic light, remember you gotta pray. I'm trying to give you moments to remind yourself to pray because there was a time the old folks say, "Soon as your feet hit the floor, y'all yeah. talking about making your bed." I ain't, I'm talking about praying. You know you'll make your bed. Look at your, your bed. How many y'all bed? Nah, don't don't do the raise your hand. Cause you know your bed a mess now. All right. If you want to give online, please give online to see the information on the screen. Those y'all here, you can always give, of course. And you can give on the drop boxes on the way out, one in the front door, one right here. Also, you can give online. I thank God for everybody here. Don't, I want y'all to don't forget to pray, 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 pray. I believe that prayer changing. Nothing else. Praise. Praise is the attitude. If I say attitude. Praise is more than clapping your hands, running around in church. That's good that you can give God your praise. And for those of y'all who don't praise at all, you get mad with people that clap and stand up. You don't understand why they do that. They call that salt. It's because most people know when I get out of here, it's hard to do some of the stuff I do in here. But those of you who can't give God one hour and a half of praise and your undivided attention, shame on you. How you deserve a life of blessings and prosperity and you get in here and get flown. It's crazy, man. I'm, all, I'm going for broke every time. Every set, I'm gone. Because I did too much in the streets that I ain't care about nothing. If anybody here, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I don't know why I feel so commissioned to say this, it's two of the people here, your past telling on you. Because you was patient then. You know, you have a problem with patience on the phone. You have no problem. You have some, some of these problems you got now, you trying to play God like you ain't no go-getter. For seeing you are. Some of y'all is for money. But you know what the Bible's about money? For the love of it. Love money is the what? It's the root of all evil. I want to pray. Let's pray. Let's all stand. Look at your neighbors. I'm glad you're close to me today. Come on. Find somebody in front of your eyes. I'm glad you're close to me. You helped me play through it. Come on. Tell them. You helped me play through it. I appreciate you. You helped me play through it. Let's pray. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling. Now unto him who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly of all we ask a thing.
through the power that work among us. God, we thank you today, God. Thank you for everyone here today. Thank you, God, for those that are online. God, thank you for those here. God, that's giving their gifts, God, they're giving their seed, God. They're trusting you, God. They're trusting your power. They're trusting you, God, even in this ministry, God. Bless them now. Multiply, God. Remind them, God. Show them, God, in some form of compassion right now, God, that you're still able to cover them, get them through the pain, get them through the situation, God. Show them right now, God, that you're still God enough to help them play through it. We thank you now, God, for those who gave, gave out a seed, gave out obedience. Now, God, as we dismiss from this place, dismiss from this life, God, we ask you to continue to cover us until we meet again. We'll be so careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. We ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus. We all pray. Lift your hand up as high as you want to go and shout, it's already done. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, before you leave, invite at least two people and say, play through it, play through it, play through it.